Welcome to this session of uh, Winter Conference 2024. Uh, as you can see, the title of it is Your Planner, Your Future Planner is in Your Machine Shed. My name is Doug Wiegand and Caleb Schlater and me are going to be doing this session. And we're going to start off by going a little bit back in time. In the last 30 years since the beginning of precision planning, we've done a lot of research on crop emergence. What we've learned for 30 years in a row is that late emergers reduce yield. The result is what we see in this picture, not just with corn, but with cotton, with soybeans, with every crop that we've researched just throughout North America. <clears throat> So as we ask ourselves why, why, why is a lady merger that's a day or two behind or one collar behind, why are they, why do they produce less food? It's because of sunlight. It's really very simple. Uh, a plant harvests the sun to produce sugars to produce food. And if I have a plant that is a lady merger, whether it's a tree or whether it's a corn plant, its neighbors are always going to be shading the sunlight and therefore it will harvest less sun. If I harvest less sun, I'm going to produce less food. So as we think about that and what we've learned at Precision Planning and what you've learned on your farm for decades is that if we want to maximize yield, we have to get re uh, consistent germination and then therefore emergence. So let's start with germination. As we think about germination, what are the requirements? What do I have to have as a manager to get consistent germination? Well, we all know the first few ingredients, right? We have to have moisture. And the next thing is what? We have to have temperature, right? And the third thing we have to have for that seed to be able to germinate is oxygen. Okay, so as we think through that, Let's now step out of that environment and let's go to the tools that we're going to do, that we're going to use to put that seed in that environment. Okay, as we do that, we're going to look at this row unit or this planting system and we need to think through what are the mechanical forces that lead to variation. You see, as we look at the top of that row unit, we've got applied pressure, we've got seed weight, those are variations, right? And we look at the bottom of the row unit, what are the variations against uh, the contact points or engagement points into the soil between the row cleaner, the, the, the residue manager, the, the disc blades, and the closing system? You see, those, as we're traveling through the field at 5 mile per hour or maybe 10 mile per hour, uh, they're not just running static, are they? They're engaged in the soil, they're hitting residue, they're hitting rocks, they're hitting firmer soil, drier soil, moisture soil, and then on top of that, it's not always a perfectly smooth environment. It might be a few clods, and so, you know, them, them gauge wheels are doing this, right, on top of the displays, and so therefore, that's a lot of variation when you think about it dynamically, right? It'd be like me standing on a scale, and you'd put an electronic sensor on there, and I'd start doing this. What would happen? it would be very variable, even though I'm a constant weight. And so that's the kind of mechanical forces we've got to be thinking through. Now you and I are going to go try to manage that in the field that we can get a, can get a consistent sidewall down force so we can assure that we're putting the seed to depth. So as we think about that, we're going to clear the residue, plant the seed, close the furrow, right? We're going to clear that residue. We're going to go in there with, get with a disc blade and, and, and gauge wheels that are going to put a sidewall footprint. And we got to think about that. Then we're going to put, then we're going to take a firm, we're going to firm that seed into the bottom of the furrow so we can eliminate the air pockets around that seed. And then hopefully we can close that furrow to where we can also push, push, the, push the soil back around that seed and, and have just the right soil density around that. So as we put seed in the ground, it really doesn't matter what type of seed. There's some simple foundational things that we're trying to achieve. We're trying to create depth consistency, right? So we want to put enough weight on that planting system, on that row unit, so that we have consistent depth with every seed. Now, in addition to that, we also want to put a little bit of force on that soil so that we can squeeze the excess air out of out of that loosened up soil that we just created, right? <clears throat> the, other side of the, the other side of that equation is compaction. 
We want to prevent compaction. So we don't want to carry too much weight because then we'll, then we'll squeeze too much of that pore space out of that soil. We'll create compaction and we'll reduce the air and the water needed to germinate that seed. So what we're really trying to do is this right here. This is what they call healthy soil. Where we get, where we end up when we put the soil back with 50% solid and 50% pore space. And that pore space ideally would be half water, half air. Now Precision Planning a few years ago designed something called a smart firmer. A smart firmer runs in the, in the furrow, it runs four spectrums of lights and, and it measures, uh, one of the metrics it measures is uniform furrow. And so uniform furrow is going to tell me any inconsistencies that it sees in voids, daylight, or moisture variation. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That's, so if I have 100% uniform furrow, it's going to be very even. If, as that number goes down, it tells me that my, my consistency in that soil profile that seed by seed is seeing is starting to vary, and that's going to lose. So as we dive deeper and we look at soil under a microscope, this would be something blown up. This is what we'd want to see. This is the macropore structure or peds of that soil where you got the particles that are glued together and then you've got pore space in between. You have to have that pore space for available water and available air to exist. And so we go back to this chart of this healthy soil and why is it that they call this healthy soil? Because this would be optimal germination, root growth, microbial activity, and yield. That's the optimal environment. So as managers, that's how we want to manage that process as we go through that. So really what we're doing is we're not just putting seed in the soil, but we need to be thinking, how are we managing the soil density, right? That's a big part of consistent emergence. Now here's an experiment I did. I get bored at home, so I went in my basement. First I went out in the field and I dug a five gallon bucket of soil with a, with a spade. I brought it in, uh, I, I let it completely dry out. I went in my basement, I took two eight inch acrylic tubes, drilled holes in the bottom of them, put them in these pans. I added water in there and you can see on the right hand side, I took a, a scoop of that soil, I put it in my wife's blender and we ground that soil and we eliminated the macropore structure. And you can see this water as it migrates up on the left hand side, it goes clear to the top. It saturates the entire thing through adhesion and cohesion. That, that water just travels right up through that soil. And on the right hand side, as soon as it hit that one inch layer that I put in of the same soil, all I did is ground it. I changed the structure. There's no pore space and it didn't go up through that soil. It stopped right there. Three days later, I went down there, looked, it was bone dry on the one side and saturated on the other. So as we think about soil density, as we think about mechanical variations that lead to managing soil density, that's what we're doing. What we've learned at Precision Planning is consistency pays. So when I back up a few years, you have to measure the variable in order to know how variable it is, right? You have to measure it. And so when we measure real-time variations, then we can understand what they are and how to fix them. So at Precision Planning, the engineers have designed a single row module called an SRM. We bolt that right onto the row unit, and that row unit and its vertical velocities me are measured with an accelerometer in that processor. And in the 2020, that comes up as a good ride metric, right? So if I have 100% good ride, that means it's really smooth. And then we have a load pin. That load pin was put uh, uh, to, between the depth linkage to measure the weight the gauge wheel's carrying, that leftover weight that we were talking about. That's the footprint beyond the depth. And that load pin measures the variations of that load pin as it's going through the field like I was showing, right? And then we put a smart pin on the closing furrow force. And that measures the variations from the, the weight on the closing. And then they designed something called a smart firmer. And that smart firmer measures the variations in residue, the variations in moisture, the variations in temperature, organic matter, CEC, 
and ultimately a uniform furrow. So then what we've done over the years is we've designed and created control tools. Once we know what the variation is, then we've designed control tools to minimize that mechanical variation. And what we've learned in every case for 30 years is that as we decrease real-time mechanical variations, we increase agronomic value. Now through the 2020, we give you all these measurements, all these variations, so you as the operator in a cab can now be, uh, be aware of problems, of variations, and then also manage accordingly. So when I go back to the Wiegand farm, my family farm, back in 2008, that was the first year that we put a 2020 on our planter. I was in the planter with Uncle Mark when we planted this field. And as you look at this, this was a downforce margin. It was a Kinsey planter with heavy duty side springs, just like in the picture here. It's manual controlled. And, and we started on the west side of this field. It's a 130 acre river bottom, so it's a very flat field. It's, there's not a, lot of, not, a, not a lot of elevation changes in it. And you can see there's parts of this field that we had correct downforce. The green was right about where we wanted the weight carried. And there was parts in this field we had excess downforce. Now, if you look at that pass where it shows excess downforce or excess force, if I look at that uh, up and down, there's parts of that pass that it's green. See, what we learned when we were planning that is if we backed off one notch in downforce, those parts that were green, we planted shallow. So we couldn't do that, could we? So we were forced to carry excess downforce a good segment of that field so that we didn't have shallow planted corn. So then we ask ourselves, does downforce management pay? Well, we did a plot, we'd done plots as soon as we come out of 2020. Since we had a load pin, now we could measure it, now we could compare it. We could compare not just what was the applied, but what was the weight being carried. And you can see that there's a sweet spot. And if I get too heavy, I'm gonna lose yield. And if I get too light, I'm going to lose even more, right, according to this plot. And then we did another plot. What happened? Well, if we got too heavy, we lost yield. And if we got too light, we lost more. How about this plot? Same thing. See, year after year after year, we just kept doing all these plots. And what we learned was that when we decrease the variations and we find the right spot and we decrease the highs and the lows, we're going to improve yield. So then we go to Air Force in 2009, same field, river bottom. We put Air Force on. Air Force is an automatic control system that controls the airbags as one section, the entire planter. So it's adding and adjusting air real time based off the load pin. Now you can see this map looks much better just one year later with the same planter with Air Force added, automatic downforce control. And there's areas of that field, we nailed it. But there were still spots or segments of that field that we had excess downforce. So there was still variation that was happening that the downforce management system couldn't offset, right? So the engineers kept going. 2013, they came out with a system called Delta Force. Delta Force was hydraulic control that applied force and lifted force to and from the row unit real time. When I say real time, it, can, it, it makes, a, it makes a, a control decision five times per second or every one fifth of one second. And when I look at the results of that, what happened? Well, there was no excess force anywhere in that 130 acres. We had the correct force everywhere. And when we took it to yield and we did comparisons, again, in the yield trials, guess what we found? Downforce management paid. Now we're going to go into this cleaning furrow and making the trench and, and, and closing. And let's get down under the ground instead of on top, right? And so we first got to take a look at the seed environment. And if we have a lot of residue out there, we got to ask ourselves, I've had a lot of guys ask me, hey, Doug, should I buy row cleaners? And I'll ask, I'll say, well, the question isn't, should you buy row cleaners? The question is, what's the cost of, what's the agronomic cost of residue and do you have a lot of it, right? And so when we ask ourselves what's the agronomic cost of residue near a seed or roots of a young plant, the first thing is it wicks moisture away. 
So when I put that up against the seed, it's wicking moisture away. That seed can't pull that moisture that's attached to that residue away. It's, an, it's unavailable moisture. So I'm going to compete against uh, germination. It insulates. When I put a mat of residue and I measure underneath it, it's 15, degrees, 15 to 20 degrees cooler versus a clean spot two inches under the soil in the middle of the day. So insulation, it prevents the soil from warming up. The other thing is it creates seedling blight. So as soil temperatures warm up to 60 degrees, the microbial population explodes. As that happens, they break down the carbon that's in the residue. When that happens, then those microbes release toxins near that little seed or young plant, young root. Those toxins can have an iliopathic effect and cause seedling blight. And then as that's happening, as those microbes are breaking down that residue, they utilize nitrogen and phosphorus that's available in the soil as energy source to consume that food. So that young seed, that young plant, if there's a lot of residue around it, you're competing for nutrients against that residue. And the residue will win every time. The microbes will win. So when are you competing? Well, a, a young corn plant, for example, through V3, 80% of its nutrition is coming from the starch of the seed and the seedling root. So if I've got residue in that small little area, when that thing's trying to produce up through V4, I, I could take that plant out and really, really hurt it if I introduce seedling blight. So then we go to the PTI farm. They did a residue management study in 2021. You can see where they inoculated residue into the trench at a rate of 10% and 30%, took it to yield, harvest deers, put them on this board. Precision planning designed the smart firmer to re measure residue. It's eyes in the trench. It will tell you 95% clean furrow like you're seeing right here means that five feet out of every 100 you have residue in that furrow. That's what it saw instead of soil. What does that mean agronomically? Well, if we follow through, we look at the four-year research study that the PTI farm did on the economic side, every 1% of residue that you increase in the furrow, every one seed out of 100 that has residue next to it, you're going to lose 1.3 bushel per percentage point. That's the average of a four-year study. So if I have that smart firmer in my, on my planter and I'm looking at the 2020 and I'm at 92% clean furrow, if I can adjust them to reveal row cleaners or my clean sweep and I can increase the aggressiveness, do a little better job of cleaning and take that to 95% from 92, that's pretty good ROI. Again, a management tool. So then we look, okay, what, what row cleaners are out there? Well, there's the folding row cleaners that mount to the row unit. Here's a Martin C125. There's another Martin C125 on a Kinsey pusher unit with side treader wheels. And then we have this one that's a Yetter a shark tooth, again, with side treader wheels. Those three are all row unit mounted. And, and precision planning engineers designed something called Reveal. And instead of row unit mounted, it's bar mounted. Why would they do that? <coughs> What they learned is that the row unit, the row cleaner mounted to the row unit created a lot more mechanical variations, okay? And so the reveal by getting it on the bar, there's a few other things they did. They made the gauge wheel separate from the uh, adjustable from the residue wheels. So gauge wheel is adjustable to increase or decrease the aggressiveness of that residue wheel. So if I'm in no-till versus conventional till, I have that flexibility, right, for each environment. Another thing they did that was unique is they designed the gauge wheel to trail behind the residue cleaners. So now the tire, the gauge wheel, is always running in a cleaned furrow, a cleaned bed, instead of out in front, like on the side treader wheels. And then they added an up and down airbag to be able to give us infinite control as a manager on the amount of pressure we need to get the optimal performance. So when you look at this planter going through the field, you can see the fifth row in has a reveal row cleaner and all the other rows are uh, a row mounted row cleaner. Now if you look at mechanical variations or you look at variations of ride and that kind of stuff, there's quite a bit of difference there in there, right? 
that row in that fifth row is, is a lot smoother than those rows around it. And as we follow through and we look at the data off of the measurement tools that we have on that planner, what do we find? The R&D plots showed a 9% smoother ride when we took the row cleaner off the row unit and put it on the bar. And when we looked at the amount of applied force needed to keep that row unit in the ground, when we took the Reveal row cleaner compared to the row unit mounted row cleaner, it was 118 pounds less force needed, applied force, to keep that disc opener row unit in the ground to the desired level. So we look at the residue management study, we go into the yield plots, and we look at on the, on the, uh, <coughs> the ones that say clean sweep are row unit mounted row cleaners, and the Reveal, of course, are bar mounted. And the average is a 4.5 bushel advantage. Again, if we can get a better consistency in variations, it's going to pay. That's what we've learned. And so then we even go to the next step. And in 2023, Jason and his team on the PTI farm did a residue management study with Reveal to find out where that best setting and best aggressiveness was, right? So you've got ultimate uh, adjustable pressures, and you got a multiple uh, aggressiveness from a spike standpoint. Now we got the, the furrow clean, now we're going to create the furrow. And when you look at creating the furrow, when you go out there and you set that planter and you get it all set up, I don't want you to just think behind that planter of the seed and the furrow. I want you to be thinking from the outside to the outside of that gauge wheel, the footprint. Remember? Soil density management. What do we have to manage there? Soil density. Okay, so if we have a light setting, then we're going to go to clo uh, closing. When we look at closing, again, if we're too light, what happens? Well, now we got air pockets. If we're too heavy, what do we got? We got, we got a compaction, right? We don't want that around the seed. So when I go out in the field, I've been doing this a few years, and for decades, I could never go to a field anywhere in this country and walk the entire field and not find spots that weren't closed. There'd be areas that it did a good job and I could always find an area in that field that it didn't do a good job of closing. Why? Because it was one set pressure, right? And so would you say this is good closing? I'd be a little nervous if that was my field. I can see right where the slot is, right? Now, I know that it, I can't see air pockets, but I can see where it is. If I can see it, that soil dries out, what's going to happen? Probably going to crack open. How about this one? This one make you feel good if it's your farm? Just pull out of that field and you look back? That one really makes me nervous. How about you? Okay, so precision planting engineers designed a cool tool called uh, Furrow Force. And Furrow Force is a two-section closing wheel. Now, Here's a short video, just looking behind it. On the back side, you see what we call the stitch wheels. And those have a, a load pin there measuring the weight being carried. And so therefore, you know if you're carrying weight on that wheel. And you know if that wheel's carrying weight, you're probably doing a really good job of closing. And then if we look at the front stage wheels, the two discs, they are run at an angle that they are closing the furrow and shattering the sidewalls from the bottom up. That's really important. You know why? Because if I do it from the top down, there's a pretty high risk I'm going to knock dry dirt, dry soil around that seed before it closes. So as we look at this video and we get kind of an in the furrow look, there you go. It's firming and zipping that thing together and it's got the stitch wheels on the back side to refirm back that soil density that we're after. So when we look at furrow four studies, here's a plot that was done where we're looking on this map is the closing applied force, the amount of applied air, airbag pressure. And then here's the margin. That's the weight being carried on that last wheel. And you can see the bottom is a manual control. You can see on the applied side, it was just a static one pressure applied the whole time. And then on the top, they turned on automatic control where it's adding and in, in, in venting air based off the load pin reading on each row automatic individual row by row control. So on the applied side, you see the variation in that map on the control pressure side, but on the margin, what do we see? Less variation. What's the key? Consistency pays, right? So when we go and we look at the results of furrow force, 
Here's a 12-hour emergency study done at the PTI farm. You can look at this. Furrow force had almost 85% emergence within the first 12 hours of each other. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful, especially when you look at the same environment, same day, same soil, same moisture. The other four wheels, the best one was under 68%. When we take that to yield, what do you got? Again, consistency pays. When we can decrease the mechanical variation and we can increase the consistency in, in, in those metrics that we're trying to manage, we're going to see a better yield. So when I look at furrow forest closing today and I walk behind that planter, our planter on our farm, and I walk the entire field, guess what? I can't find a seed that's not closed properly. I can't find an air pocket around a seed. And when I go into the more no-till, heavier stuff, same thing. And so when I dig for that seed, here's what I find. I find it tucked in there. I can't find the furrow. And I have uh, ideal soil density management around that seed. I'm going to turn it over to Caleb. Thanks, Doug. My name is Caleb Schlater. I get the opportunity to lead our, our technical support and service team here. And uh, I just, I got to tell you, the session that Doug just did is the reason I love Winter Conference. It's one of my favorite weeks of the year because I get to learn, right? I get to learn how to get better on our operation. And I, I just truly enjoy that. And so for our farm, this is one of those times where I get, to, I get to hear all of the different things that we're going through within Winter Conference and then take it home and apply it to that operation. And so what I wanted to do is I actually have a picture on the screen. That is our home operation. We're in a field called the Mac Farm. And what I love about this picture, this is, this is this past season, what I love about it is this is our planter that we have gone on a, on a journey with. We, we've, we've year over year have worked to improve this piece of equipment by utilizing retrofit technologies in order to better our operation. And so like I said, in 2015, we started this journey. And if you go back with 2015, we actually have a video where our dealers are retrofitting Delta Force, V-Drive, V-Set onto this planter so that way we could take better control as we go out and plant our crop. This was really our first step in, in stripping the planter down and saying, all right, let's, let's bring this technology and update our planter and not have to spend a massive investment to buy a brand new planter off of a dealer lot. And so when we made this update, we said, hey, this, was, this helped us get a little bit better, but then we said, what's next? What's our timeline? And so over the years, we have had these building blocks to implement new technology on our operation, and we've been able to spread out the investment over time to get the latest technology as well. And so in 2015, like I said, we brought V-Set, V-Drive, Delta Force, Wave Vision onto the, onto the planner. And then in 2018, that's when we brought the Gen 3 into the cab and we brought Smart Firmer in. So as Doug was talking about all those amazing things that Smart Firmer can tell us and give us insight into, and then the Gen 3 to give us the visibility in the cab that we hadn't had before, those are just amazing improvements that we've brought onto our farm. So after all these products got onto this planter, that's when I, I actually joined Precision Planning. I said, I've got to work with an organization that's building these innovative products. And so in 2019, I joined. And then in 2021, we said, hey, what's next for us? What's our next opportunity? And so our next opportunity was SpeedTube. We said, hey, we want to cover more acres. We think we have an opportunity there. We want to cover more acres, but we want to make sure that we singulate properly. We want to make sure we have good spacing while we're going faster throughout the field. And so that's why we brought SpeedTube on. And then we said, hey, Furrow Force looks like it's going to work. We want to, we want to test it out. So we only added eight rows because we wanted to test it out in each of our tillage environments. We're strip till, we're no till, and we're conventional till. And we wanted to see if it paid across all of our tillage practices, all of our soil types, all of our acres. So we, we tried it out. Then the next year, 2022, that's when we decided we were going we were gonna to bring Reveal onto the planner. And that was an easy decision between me and dad. We saw the design. We said, that makes sense. Let's take the row, the row cleaner off of the shank, 
remove that shock from the shank and clean our fur appropriately. And so that's why we brought 24 rows of reveal. And at that time, we also looked back and said, you know what, furrow force did pay. And so we added the other 16 rows of furrow force as well. And then finally, in 2023, this past season, we added two rows of EM flow sense. And this is going to be the start of our journey, taking more control over the liquid on our planner, not relying solely on red balls. And so for us, for us, this is, like I said, this has been a journey over nine years. And nine years ago, if you go back in time, a lot has changed on our operation from where we started to where we are today. And I'm guessing if you think back to your operation nine years ago, you've had a lot of changes as well. So for example, on our farm, this 24 row planter used to cover every single acre, both corn and soybeans. Now we only cover the corn acres. We have an air drill that covers our soybean acres. The other thing is, is before we didn't have speed tubes. So now we're able to cover more acres in a shorter amount of time. We're able to do it only across the corn acres. We're sitting here saying, maybe we gotta think of, of what's next. Maybe we gotta make a different decision for our operation. Do we need to actually go down in rows? That way we can focus and put a, put a more intentional focus on each and every row, have lower maintenance costs, but at the same time accomplish the goals that we want to. So dad and I have been kind of going back and forth, thinking about what's next. And so when we start thinking about what's next, now we have to start saying, Hey, what, what, are, what do we want out of that planner? What do we need out of that planner? And Doug covered a lot of those things agronomically that we want to focus in on. And there's really five key things that I must have my planner do for me, right? The first one, as Doug talked about, is cleaning that furrow. We want to get the residue out of there. Number two, we want to create a mellow furrow at a correct depth consistently. We have to hit depth consistently. That's going to put us under the moisture line. It's going to make sure that we're able to imbibe that and have good and even consistent emergence. Then we wanna place our banded fertility optimally. We wanna put our fertility in a place where that plant can uptake it at the right time. Then we wanna place the seed precisely. We wanna have good singulation. We wanna make sure we're not bringing competition between our plants. And then finally, we wanna close the trench completely and have ideal soil density around it like Doug was talking about when he was going through furrow force. So these are the table stakes that we need in our planner. And so as we started talking about what, what's next for us, and we talked about our table stakes, and then we hear about Cornerstone Planning System from Justin this morning, it kind of rocked my worldview. Because I've always thought of a planner as a bar with 24 rows. But then when you start really thinking about what do I need out of my planter, Everything I just listed happens after the W plate. We are really not talking about a planter, we're talking about a planting system. This individual row is what is going to do the job and that's why we wanna have more focus on each and every individual planting system on our planter. But when I think about what's next, maybe it's an opportunity for us to go down the planting system path. We wanna optimize each of our planning systems to have the best potential each season across every acre. And so now we have this optimized and integrated planting system design. And I, as I look through it in the lens of the decision on our operation, I wanted to run through several things that I see that could be a benefit to us on Schlater Farms. And several things that have been built in from an agronomic standpoint, from an ease of use standpoint, from an adjustability standpoint, that are going to help us as we start thinking about the future and leaving a legacy on our operation. Does that sound good? Well, that's where we're going to go. So the first thing that I wanted to talk through is Justin mentioned this. He, he led out with it with the, the, the trailing gauge wheel. Here's what I know. When you saw that, you had an opinion. You said, I don't know if I agree with that. And the reason I know that is because when we started down this path with imprecision, we had two camps and everybody had an opinion. You had your trailing gauge wheel camp, you had your leading gauge wheel camp. It was like the precision planting version of the Hatfield and McCoys, right? 
And so what we needed to do is we said, hey, we got to settle this feud in one way, shape, or form. Because the reason we want to make sure that this is the right opportunity for us is are we getting the performance we need? And so how do we determine that? Well, we're not going to determine it like the Hatfield and McCoys did to sell their feud. We're actually going to use data. One of the things we say here at Precision Planting is that one accurate measurement is worth a thousand expert opinions. And so we wanted to put it to the test. What we did is we went out and we added accelerometers to our row units, to our planting systems, and said, hey, we're going to have an accelerometer on a leading gauge wheel, an accelerometer on a trailing gauge wheel, and put it to the test. And so I have that data right now where you can see there's a difference in consistency. The trailing gauge wheel is in light blue, the leading gauge wheel is in pink, and there's a massive difference between the two. When we showed this data to our team, it, it challenged a lot of our thought processes. It challenged a lot of things that we have held true in our minds for a long time. And then there were some that said, I don't fully believe the data. Okay, well, let's figure out how we can help that. And so what we did is we said, hey, let's take the scientific approach. Let's remove variables, right? Because what we did is we ran this through hard ground, rough ground at five mile an hour with our disc opener set shallow. And so we said, hey, the next time we run through it, let's, let's actually take our disc openers off. And so we did that. And you can see again that the shock that the row unit and the shank experienced over time was much greater when it was the leading gauge wheel than the trailing gauge wheel. So what does that mean to us on our operation? What does that mean to us when we're actually in the field? What that leads to is that leads to good ride. That leads to how much shock we have. That's going to impact our meter performance. That's going to impact our depth consistency. And both of those, as Doug talked about earlier, are so critically important to getting consistent and even emergence. Doug used the phrase consistency pays, and right now when we look at it, there is one that is definitely more consistent, and that's why we're heading down that path. And so for me, once again, it, it challenged me. I had one worldview. I thought of it one way, and I had to change my mindset. But here, here I'll tell you when it really clicked for me. It was about three days after Christmas. Three days after Christmas. Does anybody know what three days after Christmas is? That's trash day after Christmas. And for somebody who has two young children, you can't believe how much those little human beings create and waste, especially after Christmas. And so this actually clicked for me at that moment. I was trying to be as efficient as possible to get as much garbage from our house down our long white rock, rock driveway into the, to the road. And so I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what every man should do. I'm going to take two of these wheelie trash bins at once. So I pushed one and I pulled one. I felt a massive difference between the two. And so I was thinking about it. I was like, holy cow, it was so much harder to push than it was to pull. And so I called up my neighbor. I said, Dale, hey, you haven't taken your trash cans out yet. I need you to capture a video for me. Can you show me your son pushing one trash bin down to the road? and pulling one trash bin down to the road. And you can see a difference in the video, can't you? He was a good sport for us. We're very thankful he did that. But man, it really showcases the difference when it comes to trailing and leading gauge wheel. And so now, as we start talking through good ride, and as we start talking through the agronomic benefit, there's another key element when it comes to our planter pass, and that's furrow creation. And as we think through what our downfalls can be in furrow creation that lead to poor emergence, I have a couple examples here on the slide. The first one is where we have a furrow that is too narrow and that seed's going to get hung up, right? Then you have the other one where we have a W bottom, where that seed's not going to get placed down. We're going to have an air pocket below it. We're not going to get even and consistent emergence. And so now those two situations are often caused by not maintaining our planting system. But here's a couple of ways that we've decided to help and address that within the cornerstone planting system so that way we can achieve that even and consistent 
emergence. So right out of the gate, you can see that these are some subtle changes, but they're important changes. The first one is we have an 11 and a half disc degree angle. Over time, we've gotten heavier discs. We've gotten more rigid bearings. We needed to make an adjustment when we were designing this in order to address that coming into the industry. And so we've changed that disc degree angle from 12 to about 11.5, so that way it'll move less soil during furrow creation, cause less drag, and improve our wear life by reducing the stress on the components. It also, it also gives us the opportunity to require less downforce need and reduces the opportunity for furrow compaction. So just that subtle change puts us in a better position to create a good furrow. The other thing that we've done is we've lowered the contact point. You can see on the slide the difference that where that contact point is going to be as we cut our furrow. That's going to allow us to avoid that W bottom that can be deadly when we're trying to achieve that even and consistent emergence to help us hit our yield potential. So these are several of the things agronomically that we have built into this row unit. So one of the other things that I wanted to kind of think through is agronomic performance is important for us in our operation. Also, how we utilize this piece of equipment in the field is important. How do we set it up for success before we even get out and make our first pass? And so that's where adjustability comes into play. The past several years, we've had the opportunity to learn and apply on our operations some key things that I've learned at Winter Conference, that I've learned at our dealer planner clinics. One of those is our depth calibration. We know how important it is to achieve a consistent depth, right? We have to. And so one of the things that we found out over time, your row units start to lie to you. They don't tell you the truth anymore. So when you set your T-handle to a position, that depth is not going to stay consistent year over year. And so one of the things we do on our operation that we've learned from winter conferences is to do a depth calibration where we take our, our planner, we actually put two four by fours underneath our gauge wheel, we drop our planner down, and we figure out where we're at by looking on a scribed line on that four by four to say, are we, where, are we close to two inches? That's where we want to get our baseline. And then once we find our two inches, then we mark. So you can see on this picture of our shank, we've got two yellow marks. That's where two inches is for us. But then as we keep going down row by row, you start to see there's some variation, right? That first one is in the five and four location. The second one's in five and five, and the third one is in five and five, and five as well. And so we have different variation across all of our planning systems on our planner. And so now as we think about how do we address that with the cornerstone planning system, we've actually made it easy to adjust, easy to true up, easy to make that handle tell us the truth. And so one of the ways that they've designed that is within the, within the T handle here, we actually have a cam disc that as you adjust it, it's going to allow us to true up and say here is exactly where we want to be. And it's extremely simple and easy to do, standing right in front of the planning system, using a wrench, and as you can see in the, in the video, just making that slight adjustment helps us understand exactly where our row unit is going to be planning to depth, setting us up for success. And as we think about setting us up for success, there's another area that we've talked about over the years, and that's our closing tail alignment. Doug talked about how important it is to have good furrow destruction and bringing that soil back to a good soil density around the seed. But here's what I'll tell you, if your closing tail is not aligned as you go down that path, you are going to fight that performance. And so one of the things we wanted to do was make it easy on us to adjust this closing tail. And so what you're going to do when you get out into the field, when you get out into your, when you get into your shed before you get into the field, you're going to want to do what we call a scratch test. And that scratch test is where you go out and you, you find your pad of concrete, or we've heard the joke many a time, your neighbor's pad of concrete, but you set the planter down, you pull forward, and you scribe a line. When you scribe that line, you want to make sure that that row clean, or that, that furrow force or, or 
closing system is aligned right behind your disc openers. And so if it's not, now you have to go through the work of adjusting it. You have to loosen a couple of bolts. You have to shimmy it around. You have a lot of time invested in making sure that that closing system is set up for success. And then you want to do that when you get out in the field as well. You want to make sure that you're doing it at five mile an hour, at eight mile an hour, whatever planting speed, so you can make sure that you're doing the right thing out in the field. Well, we thought about that as well, and we've designed an an easy way to make that adjustment, an easy way to align and align it precisely where it's going to take less time and less hands to set the planter up for success and to set the planting system up for success. And when I say planting system up for success, this is what it looks like. Doug showed this picture earlier. This is on our operation. I love showing these. This is actually the first seed of the day that I dug. That's a great day when you dig this for the first one, right? You, you get out there and you say, man, it's in the moisture line. There's no furrow around it. Man, it looks great. This was one of those things that I looked at and I said, we have our planter set up for success this spring. The other thing that, we, as I look through the lens of our operation, infield ease of use is incredibly important to us. We've got a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hard work in key seasons throughout the year and we want to make sure that we're making our life easier when we're trying to focus on the right things. And inevitably, and I don't know if this is the case for you, but this is the case for me, inevitably I always run into Murphy's Law. Do we know what Murphy's Law is? Yeah, that's right. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. For some reason, it's either my first pass or my last pass, but Murphy's Law always applies to me. However, there was another law I learned about. Murphy actually had an, a brother. His name was Murph. He was a farmer. His law is when the hopper is full, one thing is sure. Shenanigans will always occur. Right? Whenever we fill this hopper up, something inevitably goes wrong. After we pull ahead 10 feet, we see something that's happening that we've got to get out and we know that that is going to be completely full and it's heavy. So I thought we might as well go ahead and fill this up here and show what it's like when we get into the field. And so I've got this bag of seed. I'm going to fill this hopper all the way full. And now we just wait and the shenanigans will start to ensue, right? And you, you get back there and you're just looking at that and you're, you're going to struggle. But we have found some ways in order to make it easier. So the first one is we have a hopper latch here. And we use a good ergonomic design to allow you to get into your row unit without having to fight your hopper, without having to fight the weight. And if you have something going wrong, you're able to easily pull your meter out, adjust it, and pull out whatever it is that you may or may not have accidentally put into that meter, <laughs> right? It's always something that's going to happen when you need it to work the most, and we've tried to figure out ways to help that. So it doesn't matter if you have the mini hopper, the 1.6, the three bushel, all of these are ways that we can help improve the experience when you're in the field. And so you can even see with the three bushel hopper how it tips back and it actually will hold itself up so you don't have to hold that weight either. So the other thing that we've done is we've integrated a slide gate within our hopper. That way we can shut off the hopper from the seed pool, allowing us to make sure that if we need to, if we need to get into the meter, we can. It's those ease of use aspects that are going to help us in the season. The other thing that we think about when we put it in our, our lens of our operation, what do we need out of a planning system is maintenance and wear. And using the years of experience of our R&D team, of our team here at Precision Planning who has been focused on putting many acres underneath a planter, how can we make sure that this, this planting system lasts? And so when we look at the parallel arm bushings, we have an inner bushing and an outer bushing to make sure that when we need to, when we need to maintain that, it's going to last longer. And then also, we have the DuraWare gauge wheel 
arm pivot components as well that make it simple and easy to maintain and also simple and easy to shim against our disc openers. The other thing that we've brought in are stud dialed style dismounts and a 15 inch common disc. And the other thing that if you look at the cornerstone shank, you will actually see a wear indicator that gives us just a quick view to see how our, our disc openers are wearing and if we need to replace them. And then we've also brought in a new shank interface. And so we've actually added more contact point for within the shank and it moves it away from the bayonet style so we can improve that shank durability. Then we really look at, is this gonna fit our operation? And the Cornerstone planning system is a purpose-built system, as Justin mentioned earlier. It is built with the journey of your operation in mind, whether it comes from the factory or if you want to build it over years. So when you look at the Cornerstone planning system, there's two key things. We have a quick attach bracket that's already mounted to where you can bring in FurrowJet, you can bring in Smart Firmer, you can bring in your Keaton Seed Firmer and easily install. The other thing that we have are we have a conceal mounting bracket and a furrow force bracket that you don't need an adapter plate. You don't need extra iron in order to make it work with the cornerstone planning system. Conceal obviously just bolts right on. It's very simple design. So, and then we also look at the shank. What, what do we have inside of the shank? What, what opportunities do we have in there to improve? And so you can see that we have an integrated load cell, one that is designed for this row unit. As Justin mentioned earlier, we often need to take a look at how others have designed their equipment and adjust for that. Now we are saying, how do we get the best performance by integrating it into our design? We also have a wide shank to where there's, there's room for routing harnesses, airline, liquid line. And the other big thing is, is there is a custom harness that allows us to have drops to all of our different components, making it simple and easy when we get into the field. The other thing that I think about when we come to the cornerstone planting system is that it's not all related directly to the planting system to make us successful in the season, is it? You also have to have your trusted advisors. And for us, especially on our farm, our dealer has played such an integral part in helping us from installing our equipment to guiding us in the spring to serving our entire community, both here in North America and globally. The Precision Planning Premier Dealer is set up to help you achieve success, to help you get better, especially when it relates to the Cornerstone Planning System. And so they're in pursuit of better. We here at Precision Planning are in pursuit of better. And so for us, we are four farmers that believe in better. And I know that every farm is unique. As Justin mentioned, there's 3,000 unique planners in this audience. There's 3,000 different configurations. There's 4,000 unique operations that has your own challenges, your own set of goals. I want to tell you that here at Precision Planting, we're for you. It doesn't matter where you're at in your operation journey. You could have just bought brand new paint, right? You could have made that investment in bringing new, new iron onto the farm this year, whether it's an exact emerge, a 2150, a momentum planner. I want to tell you, if there's an area that you desire to get better in, that's what we can help with. That's what we're about. We are for you. And if you're like us and you're retrofitting and you're building a planner that's going to fit your conditions, your goals, Hey, what's, what's the next opportunity for you? What is the next challenge that we can help overcome? So we're for you as well. And now, if you are thinking about what is your next opportunity, and you're looking at where I can go with my operation, how can I continue my legacy with a cornerstone planting system, if you're looking to, to bring new iron onto the farm that's flexible and optimized for your operation, we are for you. That's why I love this organization. That's why I love this, this brand. It is about being for farmers and helping them get better. So thank you so much for your time today. If you want a closer look at the Cornerstone Planning System, please scan this QR code. 
This will give you a, a, an insight on your phone that you can take a look and, and just dive in to what this planting system can offer. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you the best of the year.